Have you ever wanted to reach devices inside your local network from a remote location? Well, today I'm going to show you a super simple, easy way to set up a WireGuard VPN using Home Assistant add-on so you can reach those devices. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is jump over to my test Raspberry Pi setup, and I'm going to install WireGuard VPN on this. Now, you can install this on any Home Assistant device inside your local network that has access to the network itself that you want to be on. So if you have a Raspberry Pi that's on, let's say 192 and your other stuff's on 172, you're probably gonna have to do some internal routing to make this work. However, out of the box, if everything's on the same network, then it'll work just fine. So under supervisor, we're gonna to go to the uh, add-on store and we're gonna search for WireGuard. And we're, gonna, we're going to go ahead and install it. And this will take just a moment. Okay, now it's installed. And you can check start on boot if you want it to run uh, when you start up Home Assistant and also Watchdog. Uh, I don't use that very often, uh, but Watchdog will restart it if it uh, it crashes. Uh, that's a, that's useful if you're not at your local network, uh, you're on away on a trip or something, and then all of a sudden your VPN fails, it'll auto restart. Of course, if you have access to your Home Assistant remotely, you can still get in here and do this as well. Uh, and then auto update. I never auto update anything because I like to check and see what updates are, are available or changes are in there before I do an update. Once it's updated, there's a little bit of configuration to do here. What you're going to have to do is set up a host name that is reachable from outside your network. So you're going to have to set up a public DuckDNS domain or something like that. I happen to have one set up here, so we're going to we're going to use that one. And this is a domain that's reachable from outside of my network publicly. And then the address is, I'm going to leave that alone. This is automatically created by WireGuard for this address. This is the actual address of the uh, endpoint for the VPN. And then this is going to be the address uh, for the first peer. And I'm going to call this my phone because I'm going to connect using my phone to the VPN. And then it assigns this address to my phone when it connects. You can also set allowed IPs and client allowed IPs. I'm not gonna get into all the details of all this setup. This is basically to show you a very simple, quick, easy way to get up and running. So I'm gonna leave all of the rest of this as default. I'm gonna save it. Now it's very important that you port forward port 51820 through your firewall. This is the port that will make the connection through your firewall to your VPN endpoint which is your home assistant server. Now, the other thing I'm gonna say is, is I'm not gonna get into all the security ramifications and all the other what, what ifs and gotchas and everything else. Security is everybody's responsibility. And you, as I say in all my videos, you you take on the uh, your acceptable or comfortable risk that you, you uh, have when you build something like this. Um, so that being said, I'm comfortable with the way this is set up. It is a encrypted tunnel between my phone and my home assistant server. Anyway, make sure that's port forwarded or it's not going to work. And everybody has a different router set up. I use Unify, um, uh, so I'm not gonna take you through how the router port forwarding works because that's different for everybody. All right, once that is up and running, we can go back to info and we can start up the app, the add-on. When this is started up, it's gonna create a folder in your Home Assistant Drive. And this folder can be reached by uh, a number of different methods. And if you look at the documentation here, it talks about that. You can, you can download the file. You're gonna download or open this file. It's got a, um, a QR code in it. And this is what makes this super simple. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scan the QR code from my phone and it's gonna automatically set everything up I need to connect assuming that the port forwarding is in place and all the rest of that. So you can either reach this using Samba, which is what I'm going to do, Visual Studio Code, or the Configurator add-on. I didn't find the Configurator add-on for my setup, so that's not an option for me. But I do have Samba show, uh, set up, and what I'll show you is uh, in Supervisor add-ons, I do have a Samba share, and that exposes Home Assistant folders with SMB, and that allows me to connect using File Explorer tab here. And I will go down to my files 
on the Nginx or on my development server. So this is my Samba share here. And then this is going to be the WireGuard folder. And then this is my phone. And it creates this based on what you configured in here. So if we go back over to WireGuard and look at the configuration, I have a peer named my phone. You can create another peer called, you know, wife's phone or partner's phone or computer or laptop or something else. And it will create yet another uh, file for you to download the QR code. The caveat to that is that once you create the first one, you're going to have to assign these addresses going forward. You just copy this block. So let's say I wanted to create a second phone. If I go down here and add a second phone uh, or my phone too, I want to make sure I'm incrementing this IP address. Uh, I'm not going to do that today. Again, we're just doing a simple one off or one, one peer connection. So we'll just leave that like that. Uh, once you have the QR code, you'll see in here that there's a QR code that is created in the WireGuard um, my phone directory. And this is off the SSL directory that I mapped from Home Assistant. So it's, uh, as it says in the documentation, it says SSL WireGuard my phone QR code. And we look here, we have SSL WireGuard my phone. I just happened to map the SSL directory to my Samba share to drive W. That's what we have. Okay, you're gonna get the QR code. You also get a client conf and a private key, which we'll talk about here in a second. Now, for those of you that are concerned about my security, and I appreciate that, I will be destroying all of this after I've filmed this video. So you may see the QR code. It will not be active by the time you watch the video. So um, don't be concerned for that. All right, I'm going to open this up. And here's the QR code. All right, what we're going to do next is we're going to get on our phone and we are going to download the application if you haven't already downloaded it, and we're going to open it up and we're going to scan the QR code. So let me get the application going here. Okay, so I'm in WireGuard now and, I, and I'm gonna just click the plus button to add a tunnel. And it gives you options, import from file or archive, which are those other two files, uh, create from scratch, which we don't wanna do for ease of how we're doing it today, or scan from QR code. So I'm gonna click on scan from QR code and it's looking for the QR code. And it's found it now. And I'm going to give the tunnel a name. So I'll call this um, HA Home Assistant Pi. And you can't put spaces. So I'll just do HA Pi. I'll put a two because I did this earlier and I don't want it to get confused. So HA Pi 2, you can name it whatever you want to, but it doesn't allow spaces. And then create tunnel. And we're done with the QR code. All right. So now that we're done with the QR code. What's next? Well, we're going to, first of all, let's just look at this. We have an interface name, HAPI2, a public key. There's the address, 172.27.66.2. Our DNS servers are the DNS servers that are on Home Assistant, whatever that's using. And then our peer is our public key. The allowed IPs is everything. The endpoint is where it's going to connect to. So that public domain that I showed with the port 51.820, which you've opened in your router. And then persistent keep alive every 25 seconds. And all we have to do to activate this now is click on the toggle and now it should be alive. I'm going to go to a browser and I'm going to open up my local home assistant thing on the public or the private IP address. So there's 172.161.158. And if I weren't on the VPN, because I'm on the uh, LTE network, the cell phone network, I wouldn't be able to get to this page, but because I'm on here and the VPN is active, then I'm able to get in here. So I've just created a, a VPN endpoint, connect to my internal network using Home Assistant and the WireGuard add-on. So now we're gonna turn off the VPN and you'll see that I can no longer get to this. It just spins and spins. And I'm gonna turn it back on again and you'll now see after it connects, and look, look how fast it connected, by the way. It connected super, super fast. I mean, within seconds, my VPN is up and running. So now I have access to everything inside my local network that's reachable from that uh, routable IP address. Okay, so I talked about those other files that were in that directory. And here's one of them here, client comp, client configuration. 
And if we open this up, we'll see that it is the configuration, just like we saw on our phone. You would have to create a new one for a different device, but this is essentially the same thing. It would create a new private key for you and a new public key. And you would take this in your WireGuard app. I can import a tunnel from a file, and I download that comp file to my desktop here. Open it up. You can see now that I have all of the information from that comp file ready to go for me to be able to use my laptop or computer or whatever on my VPN. So this is very handy. And then of course it does logging and stuff like that. So it's super simple to create a VPN from outside into your, um, your local network using the WireGuard add-on through Home Assistant. So let me recap a couple of things that we need to do here. You need to make sure, number one, that you have uh, a, a publicly accessible domain. You can use Nabu Casa, you can use um, a Duck DNS or whatever your choice of domain is. You need to make sure that you open port 51A20 in your router. You need to install the add-on in Home Assistant and create a configuration for a peer, which will be your phone or laptop or computer. And then you install the app on your computer or on your phone. And then you scan the QR code on your phone or you import the comp file on your laptop or, or um, computer or PC or whatever. Those are the things you need to do to get started and get yourself on a quick, super simple VPN. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below. Uh, if you need any assistance, I'm also on Discord. If you liked the video, make sure you hit that like button. And if you're not a subscriber, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. Helps the channel grow. Helps me justify making the videos for you. And with that, we'll see you on the next one.